Justin in Woodland Hills, California. Hey, Justin, you had an experience with the ACA? Yeah, I did. Actually, uh, it's in regards to my mom, um, I had several, but uh, uh, my mom was uh, uh, struck home, obviously, because she's my mother. Um, about a year and a half ago, she lost her job of 27 years. The company went under basically due to the Bush recession. And um, she was, we couldn't find her private health insurance, you know, because she has, she's a breast cancer survivor and she's also survived uh, multiple reoccurrences of malignant melanoma. So Yikes. I went and shopped. Yeah, I went and shopped around every, everywhere, and I couldn't even get the companies to take her with a user medical plan with a $10,000 deductible. They said no way. So she was forced onto COBRA. Now, I, I'm sure you're familiar with COBRA, but if the mass populace isn't, you know, it is basically you have to buy the same exact insurance policy through COBRA that your former employer provided you. Right, and interestingly and, enough, the COBRA yeah. law was pushed through by Reagan. Or during the Reagan administration, yeah, well, and, it's, well, and, it, it, it's and then it expires because I, I was on Cobra for a while. Uh, yeah, well, I, it's, it's, eight, it's eighteen months, but yeah. in her case, she had a Cadillac plan from her former company, mm-hmm. so we had to buy the same policy for her. Now she doesn't have a job; she did get a severance package, not a golden parachute, or nothing. But it turned out it was eighteen hundred and fifteen dollars a month to get her covered <laughs> for the last about fifteen months, and fortunately through. Her savings and then, you know, uh, her uh, severance packages, we've been able to afford it to get her to the ACA. Right. So when the ACA came out, you know, October 1st, I was one of the guys at midnight, you know, trying to find this. And, you know, we got through. Everything was pretty good. California works really smoothly. Um, we got her onto a platinum plan. Uh, and depending on whether they consider her annuity that she's using to live on now until she turns 65 to get Social Security, um, is considered income. Right now, we're looking at about three hundred and sixty bucks a month for the platinum plan, the top wow. plan they have. So, and you know, it was so paramount because you know, I mean, obviously being a cancer survivor, but then having reoccurrences of multiple ones, especially with her skin cancer, right. it's really frightening. I'm like, you know, you know, mom, we have to pay for this no matter what, no matter how. We got to figure it out because. You can't go without. So, it. just again, Justin, your mom's cost went from what to what because of the affordable. It went from it went from uh, eighteen hundred and fifteen dollars a month to um, uh, depending on how they judge her annuity income between three hundred and fifty to five hundred dollars for the platinum plan. Wow, the that's, very top plan they have. That's and incredible. my mom's like, oh my god, she was like, I can finally like, you know go places and do things because, you know, that was all of her money. Yeah. Most people don't even... So, you know, and, and once again, you're in California, right? Yeah, no, we're in California. It works, yeah. so, it works really smooth. Yeah, California set up set up an exchange and took the Medicaid expansion money. And this is this is what I keep saying. Thank you, Justin, for the call. We have a corporate news media in this country that is not interested in reporting the news. They're interested in spectacle. They're interested in making money. It's all about it, it's all about profit. It's all about the bottom line. And you know they they tried to get us into the war in Syria. Hey, spectacle! Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, Trayvon Martin, spectacle! Wasn't that cool? Uh, rapist guy with three women in his house for ten years, spectacle! Every time this happens, every time you get a, a good spectacle going, the profits of the for-profit uh, news media go up especially the television ones. And that's my theory of why they never reported that John Boehner could have stopped the shutdown of the government on day one. And all he had to do was let the House of Representatives vote on it because they, the, there were more than 17 Republicans who would have voted to end the, to end the, um, the shutdown. And ultimately, more than, more than 20 of them did vote to end the shutdown. I think it was closer to 50 or 60, something like that. And I think that this is the new spectacle. <gasps> Obamacare is terrible because the exchange isn't working. And the reality of the matter is that the reason the exchange isn't working is because the exchange, the, uh, the healthcare.gov, the website, was set up to be a portal. It was supposed to be like Google. You know, you, you plug in, you know, the information you're looking for and it points you out to other websites. It was supposed to be you go to the federal government, to, to healthcare.gov, Plug in your social security number, your age, and your address. It confirms who you are and that you are a citizen and eligible for health care. And then it drops you into the state in which you live. And that state exchange then, you know, say that again? Oh, yeah. 
and then that's, that state knows what the requirements are, and so that state then says, uh, you know, okay, we're going to, uh, we're going to, here's the details. We've got the database. We know what the requirements are. We know what the eligibility is, all that other kind of stuff. And, and uh, instead, because 36 states have said, no, we're not going to set up these exchanges, and over 25 states have said, no, we're not going to take the Medicaid money, all of these state-by-state -state idiosyncrasies and peculiarities are having to be handled by the one single healthcare.gov federal website. And I don't know why the president doesn't just come out and say this, other than the fact that he's very averse to, to blaming other people. He's very into just taking responsibility and fixing things. But this is Republican sabotage. And it's not just Republican sabotage. It's billionaires who all have health insurance driving this sabotage. And all these Republican legislators who all have health insurance. And all these think tanks that provide Cadillac health insurance policies to their people who have health insurance. All of them pushing for people, particularly poor people, particularly working poor and, and working people in, in so-called red states not to have health insurance. And now they're going into campuses trying to convince students not to have health insurance. It's insane.